Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 114 of Japan to Gordon to Akio. Uh, this was a completely off the rails episode. It was just completely fucked. From <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, as I started talking, I kind of got into a lot of different not emotions. It's not an emotional episode, but definitely a lot of things came out. I think that. Um, I didn't realize I was thinking about under the surface about just the corona situation here in Japan. Um, it, felt, it felt actually very good to get a lot of stuff off my chest. Things that I can't really, and I explained why in the podcast, a few things that I can't really, you know, articulate to the people in and around me at work, at home, family, family back in the States and things like that. But, you know, I can talk into this microphone, into this camera, so... Um, I could let it go, let it go, <laughs> something, 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 da, 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 you know, um, which was nice, which is nice, um, and mix that with just, uh, you know, on boots on the ground kind of report about what's going on at this moment in time here in Tokyo, in the Tokyo area, uh, in Japan, um, the mood, the sentiment, and things like that. And just forecasting what I expect is going to come uh, in the next few weeks. So, uh, again, just, I don't know, ride the wave of this fucking episode with me and enjoy. Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 114. Uh, sorry to keep you guys waiting on the podcast or video thingamajig, whatever we got. Um, I got some of Costco's finest, if you will, some Kirkland, uh, IPA. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I got a case of it. Mm. I got a case of it on my last trip to Costco. Yeah, it's all right. It, yeah. Nothing to write home about, but you know, uh, I'm on the, we're on the verge of Tokyo lockdown, you know, the Tokyo Corona lockdown. So, um, last time I went last week, I got a, a whiff of something in the air that told me, you know, something's coming. So I just took another mad dash to uh, Costco when I had the chance. I was like, fuck it. Let me, <laughs> let's just like, fuck it. Let me get a case of a craft beer. Uh, cause you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. You never, 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 never know. So... So, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. But yeah, um, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, for a while, this is just gonna be a corona, uh, not beer, but a corona, you know, virus podcast. Because this is just, we're dominating everything uh, all over the airways and in my life, especially. So, you know, it... it I don't really know what else to talk about at this point. Um, so if you're if you're tired of hearing me talk about it, you know you're tired of hearing and listening about it. Of course, I'm going to try and put my spin on things. Give you know like what's going on in and around Tokyo is kind of the theme of this podcast, and I think it's it's kind of very relevant right now for me to let you guys know because I have a feeling. Um, I have my gut is telling me as I record this on April third. My gut is telling me that this, uh, April 3rd, 2020, that, you know, the next big domino to fall in the global corona fight is going to be right here in the Tokyo area, metropolitan area. Um, fuck that. This is just going to happen, right? It's, it's going down. It's just a matter of time. Um, the numbers are ticking up. Uh, I'm just watching today. Like, well, okay, let me backtrack to, to what happened. Uh, to let you to give you a feel for what's going on here because it's been about a week and a half. I'm gonna upload this probably this weekend, so it'll be about two weeks from from um, the last podcast episode. So let me um, keep get you guys up to date on what's going on here. Pretty much, you know, um, Japan. Uh, where do I start with this shit? Japan, no fucking Japan. Let me take. A, let me drink some beer before I start talking about this shit. <laughs> let me get myself inebriated before I start talking about this shit. Uh, mm. Two squigs. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, oh Japan. Oh Japan, how I love you. But you don't love me like I love you. <laughs> you know, why you treat me like this? <laughs> why you doing me like this, man? No, um, like basically, <sighs> Japan's reaction to the corona situation has been so Japanese on so many different levels. It's kind of like, you know, I, I, I've kind of had to um, back off some conversations with my wife about this because she's kind of in shock in some ways and, you know, upset in some ways, um, sometimes, you know, defensive in some ways and... Of, you know, I'm just kind of like, yo, I'm not your enemy. You know, I, I, I when she's shocked, I'm like, I know this. This is the shit I've been talking about for years. You know, um, all foreign people living here for a while and only understand this is just what it is about living in Japan. So basically, I'll just start from a governmental approach. Government, business, and maybe society. I'll do it that way. Um, I do have some stuff for you guys. Um, we're not, again, we're not going to do any um, product stuff like just that's not the mood i'm in that's not the mood i'm sure you're not in maybe you know i mean you might won't come here for this shit but i just gotta keep it real with you i'm not in the mood for that right now you know because i'm kind of bracing myself for what i feel is gonna come and start to hit tokyo about in the next week to two weeks and i'll get into it soon but I'm not depressed about it, but I'm just like, oh, uh, it's coming. You know, it's just like countdown kind of for, for this shit to hit. But um, but pretty much like the Japanese government has taken, uh, uh, from, from my point of view, an in incremental approach to dealing with the coronavirus. And by that, I mean, we, we've gone, like, you know, three weeks ago, whatever, you know, the West, America, Europe, the world was like... Fuck this. Lock your ass in the house. Stay in the house. Self-isolate, right? You've, you've heard this a lot before. Japan, um, what, the beginning of March closed schools, but pretty much life went on um, pretty much as normal up until, um, when was that? Like about, I want to say like two weekends ago, maybe two weekends ago. Um, where to... to to, you know, um, the word overshoot has kind of become a thing here in Japan. Well, that word has kind of gone away. It's still there, but, you know, like a, a, a you know, outbreak, if you will, a explosion of cases to prevent that. It was, was kind of the talk of a couple of weeks ago, but that word, is, that buzzword has kind of been going away recently. And now it's more focused on, you know, oh shit, <laughs> in the media. And I'll talk about why in a second. But pretty much... Um, the government's been taking an incremental approach and kind of passing the buck back and forth between the national government and local governments, if you will, where, you know, a national state of emergency has not been declared here in Japan as of yet. It's probably not, from what I've seen, it's not in, Japan is not in international news at all. It's going to be. Trust me. It is. Oh, my gosh, it is. Um, but, but um, yeah, so pretty much the prime minister, because... The number of cases in Japan, the, the number of confirmed cases, let me say that, in Japan has been very low up to this point, but it is arcing the, traje the traje trajectory, I'm sure. You've seen it in your countries and other countries, how it goes. It goes boop, 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 boop. It's starting to go boop, you know, in, in that northerly direction. And, excuse me, sorry. So, pretty much um, the government stance has been, uh, and said this, to de delay a declaration of a state of emergency as long as possible until just before um, shit g hits the fan, basically, is, is the stance. Um, which I don't really agree with. And, uh, <laughs> and there's, not, there's a, a, a um, large percentage of people and a growing outcry of people to... Um, do fucking do something now because if you watch the scenes going on you new york and in other country in, in other not only not only again i'm, I'm american so that's going to be my focus but of course countries all over the world you kind of know how this thing has played out time and time again where the hesitancy of, of governments to 
you know, really seriously tackle the issue early on has led to a serious spike, outbreak, crazy shit going on. And even, you know, um, when I think governments do, did, you know, see this, this is something, a Mack truck coming down the road, they kind of acted very quickly and aggressively to try and try and get out ahead of this thing. Even with those efforts, they're still being overwhelmed. Japan is doing the fucking opposite. <laughs> I'm just, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm talking about this now. I'm just like, uh, fuck. Okay, um, drink some more beer. <laughs> Gosh. Mm. Mm. Give me a second, you guys, because normally I'm not in a space where I can actually talk about this openly. You know, I'm kind of like, because, you know, I talk about this... Uh, I try not to freak my family out about it. Um, you know, even though I, they see me watch American news and things, they're asking me for my feedback and my opinion. They're hearing stories from the West and stuff like that. But I'm, I try and keep a calm face. I don't really show much emotion when I'm talking about this thing. But yeah, especially because they're Japanese, I can't be like, man, what the fuck is going on? Like, I can't say that, you know, in front of them. But I'm just like, yo, what the fuck, man? Sometimes it's so fucking Japanese is crazy and I don't mean that to like bash Japan but it's just like this you know the the national characteristic of this society to you know you've heard me talk about it before that not act quickly foresight you know lack of foresight um, preemptive measures here is <sighs> you know yeah I'm, I'm sorry I'm fucking up the whole podcast like but but seriously like like you know it, it can be borderline infuriating and I'm, I'm a pretty like understanding person but right now it's like you're, you're just watching the numbers tick. I just watch the numbers tick up and I'm just like, yo, yo, this shit is not rocket science. Like, this shit is happening and it's about to happen in your fucking face. Like, I'm, uh, because, like, even today, man, like, um, you know, we had, like, 97 new cases in, in Tokyo. And I was just watching some shit and, you know... The whole time, I've, I've told, I've, you, if you've been listening to the podcast, you've heard me talk about just, you know, we're investigation and all this shit and lack of action. And, like, the government now is basically, like, you know. Okay, so pretty, pretty much on the news tonight, in Japanese news, the thing is, is, like, the government was, like, in the Tokyo area, there are 700 beds, 700, 700 fucking beds in the Tokyo area you know, to deal with corona incoming cases. Right now, up until today, there were like 600-something of them, um, or 500-something, I forgot, six or 500-something of them occupied. Today, we had 97 new cases in Tokyo, which means, like, there's like 70-something beds um, for people who are afflicted with corona. And, like, I'm just watching the news, and, 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 and Japan's great with, like, you know, procedures and, and everything and, and, and to intake these people, you know, and like, like is it, hospitals are like really prepared and, you know, service here is, is really important. So, you know, the care for people is really important and they have these procedures, but like, it doesn't take a fucking genius to transplant the scenes from New York into the system here in Japan and see in like five fucking minutes this system is gonna be overrun and people are gonna be freaking the fuck out because japan doesn't know how to deal with that shit and mm, it can be so infuriating sometimes like like honestly i'm expecting like even the the, the news now is saying you know like, it's coming on the news now that, like, oh, we're worried about hospitals being overrun by patients and the medical system. Like, what the fuck you think was going to happen? Like, 
I'm sorry, I'm just completely derailing this this podcast. But honestly, like you guys know, there have been times where I've used this as a vent, and I've got video now, so you guys can really see like it. You know, this is kind of part of what goes into living here. You know, the part that you don't like the the ramen is good and cherry blossom season is nice, but when shit goes awry, and you're the only one that's like common sense like yo you guys got to do something and no one does it and you just like no i know fucking people are gonna die from this dumb shit like it's just like it's just a matter of time it's just like ugh. so like anyway 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 you guys let me just fucking drink some more beer mm. don't 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 mind me i'm not like sulking around all day um thinking about this i actually don't really give it much thought because during the course of my day because um i'm kind of numb to it you know i kind of know this is what japan is but like actually explaining it to people is really really frustrating and um you know it's something that i can't and don't explain or talk about with like my wife or my mother-in-law so much like they complain about it a bit but like they're just more like what the fuck but i'm like yo it's So, you know, I don't know. A anyway. Hmm. Anyway, anyway, like, so pretty much, let me get back on track. So pretty much, you know, what the government has done is gone through an incremental approach. And it originally, you know, they, they started closing, doing, I think like two weekends ago, requesting, you know, um, people to kind of uh, self-isolate on the weekends, because on the fucking weekends only, you know, and, and two weekends ago, they did it, they're doing it again, oh, was it two weekends ago, one weekend ago, I fucking forgot, it was last weekend, I think, last weekend, they asked people to self-isolate, stay in the house, and, um, people didn't, I mean, people, people really, they didn't, they did not at all, young people were out, you know, just like spring breakers you saw in America, like young people were out going to karaoke and things like that and all this shit. But what happened was, the interesting thing happened was, um, on Monday, a really famous comedian died of coronavirus. And, you know, he smoked a lot. Um, he's a bit older. But that moment kind of like was the turning point. And I, I told my wife, this is going to be the turning point. And, you know, this is where people kind of wake up to the reality of what's going on. And, you know, from that moment, that guy dying, the news cycle switched in Japan to like, oh, shit. You know, um, before then, it was like, okay, everybody. And now and then it's like, you know, politicians are wearing masks. The government is wearing masks. They're talking about social distancing. They're encouraging, you know, more businesses are shutting down. Um and things are starting to get taken a bit more seriously. You know, now it, the the, the um, narrative has gone from, okay, everyone, let's try to, you know, stay in a bit, to Monday he died, oh, fuck, he died, to, you know, oh, shit, the numbers are rising a few days ago, to now, like, oh, fuck, our medical system might not be able to handle this, oh, shit, you know, actually, we're fucked. <laughs> it's like, today is kind of like, the numbers are the, the the spike that's gone up today is like, oh fuck, we don't have enough beds. And I'm like, yeah, you guys need to have like triages. You need to have like a bunch of shit going up like right now because in like a week and a half, in two weeks, shit's gonna get real, you know. But um, you know, be, yeah, I don't know. And and some of the ideas coming up is just like, uh. You know, it's like, okay, the ideas I'm watching on the news are like, hey, if we run out of beds, we'll just house people in hotels. We'll just tell them to stay home and, you know, we'll house them in the hotels. And I know, I know, I know. I, I feel like an idiot saying it. <laughs> Drink more beer. I just, this is a beer episode. Ugh. Mm. Mm. Fuck, man, like, yeah, um, it's, it is, like, it, it does, be, I'm just counting down for this shit to, to go left, um, you know, and, and the, and Prime Minister Abe, I do have an article for you, 
you can read it, you know, promised Abe pledges two masks for every household. Because of the face mask shortage, they're gonna like give send everybody two face masks and which it deals with ugh, I just can't even talk about that shit. You know, um I also have another article in there about some superfoods that'll help your immune system, but I'm just not honestly, I'm just not in the mood to talk about any of this shit. Like I, I tried to be motivated to like deal with the shit get coming on here, you know, but like once I start talking now I start talking, I'm just like I don't know, man. Like, it's it's just a fucking shame. Like, I'm not. It's just a fucking shame. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, it, it really is. It's just a shame that I hate to say it, but you know, there's gonna be a lot of pe a lot of people who are gonna die in the next coming weeks. Um, who fucking don't need to, you know, that's what is annoying, right? That's what's kind of annoying. Like, I know people are going to die, you know, you know, people are going to die. And Japan is just like ignoring that fact or not taking that, like the stance of the government is just like, we're going to take it incrementally. I think because of the economy, they just don't want to fucking like implode the economy completely. They're just holding on to hope until the last moment just to give bit, you know, because it'll just plunge the economy, plunge the budget. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they have fucking projections and a whole shitload of crap that they're looking at. And they're also looking at a bunch of economic data that tells them like, you know, the earlier that they fucking close up the economy, the more the shit nosedives, the more money they're going to have to dump into it, the faster the fucking Japanese economy fucking implodes. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, you know? They're trying to save the economy from imploding, but by doing that, they're, gonna, they're fucking killing dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. I don't fucking know, man. Like, and it's just like... Yeah, it fucking sucks. You know, because, like, you can't say anything. Like, I mean, you know, on, on, on a on a business level, like, you know, the economic impact of this, I'm sure you know, is, 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 is hasn't even started to hit home yet. Everyone's just, like, walking around hunky-dory. Um, you know, my job, personally, is very... It's like a ghost town in there. Like, I, don't, I really don't feel like I should be working at this point, you know, but... Um, I kind of have a responsibility to go into my job. It's it's just complicated the way my company's set up. Um, you know, I wear a mask. Uh, I decontam spraying everything down, decontaminating after every lesson and everything. But um, yeah, I kind of I don't see that many students. You know, my work is closed on this weekend coming up as well, which is good. But I just feel like everyone should be home, you know, and, and, and I know that comes with a fuckload of problems, you know, fuckload of issues in and of itself, but, yo, I'm like, mm. and the thing about Japan, like, you know, when people realize it's a problem, it's already too late here, like, that's the thing, when people realize it's a problem, it's already too late, like, so, um, yeah, like, just watching people gather. Like, my son's in kindergarten. Now, he's happy. He's riding the fucking bus. He's going, you know, but, like, I just kind of half cringe every time he gets on the bus. Every time I imagine him running around the classroom with a bunch of kids. Like, you know, it's just like... <sighs> but I can't be the crazy parent to be like, fuck it, we're keeping him home. You know, you know, um, and, and, and these are some of the compromises that you have to make living in Japan. And these are some of the things that, that kind of eat away at you when you live here. Because, you know, you can't be the only one yelling fire, you know. Like, people look at you like you're fucking crazy. Even though there's a real fire in the fucking kitchen that's about to fucking blow through the kitchen doors. And, you know, fucking incinerate half the fucking area. And it's, it's just like, ugh, fuck, man. Like, I don't know. So... So this whole, this episode 114 is completely fucked. 
<laughs> um, I honestly, I, I I'm sorry for this podcast. I'm sorry for this one. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, just me pushing record now. Like, I'm not depressed. I'm not. You know, I might seem depressed, I might sound depressed, I might look depressed. I'm not, man. Like, you know, just talking about it, it's just like, it's just, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's it's just a waste. It's just a fucking waste, man. That's all. Like, hmm. I'm just slowly watching the car crash happen. You know, that's all I'm doing. I'm just slowly watching it happen. And... Um, I talk, fuck, I talk, like, I, okay, I talk to, I talk to a person, I won't say how I know this person, just because, like, you know, I want to get, but I talk to a person, a Japanese person, a Japanese woman in her 20s, she's a cancer survivor, breast cancer survivor, and, you know, she told me, like, you know, like, yeah, she's worried about the corona situation and everything, and I was like, yeah, you know, because she had pre-existing you know, health conditions. I'm like, okay, so what are you doing? Are you, are you, do you have any extra food? And she just looks at me, no. Are you staying in the house? No. Go to the gym. You know, like, but I'm stressed out about the situation. I'm worried. I'm just like, fuck. (laughs) Like, it's like, fuck, man. You know, and that's kind of, part of the frustration about living in Japan is just like I couldn't explain to her fucking stay in the house I mean she was wearing a mask you know but like you know and not everyone I'm not making sweeping gestures and generations not everyone's not like that you know and Japan is not like that but sometimes especially from the the governmental level it can't you know I don't know, man. So, so basically, you know, the point of this podcast, this episode is like, there's going to be some real shit going on in Tokyo in the next, like, week, week and a half. I, again, I'm, I have about a general, in my mind, like a general two-week timeline, somewhere, sometime in the next week. Now it feels like week, week and a half, you know, um, mid-April, if you will is when everything will probably get shut down. It's, it's been an uh, incremental approach. Like, again, after um, Ken Shimura uh, died the, on Monday of this week, that has been, like, the starting point of Japan kind of taking it seriously. And slowly, they've been going towards that. Again, they've closed, um, they've shut down major things, asking people to self-isolate. During the weekends, I think uh, two nights ago, the governor of Tokyo... Um, ask not nightclubs bars karaoke hostess bars to close down on um close down at night if you will to kind of cut uh down nightlife and things like that and you know ask people to work remotely and things like that so the number of people out are down but you still see restaurants you still see parks you still see kids in school you still see kids playing around with each other and it's just like I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm just going to stop it here. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. Like, I'll try and get my shit together. Um, well, no, fuck that. Fuck that. Okay? Fuck that. I'm not going to. No, I, my shit is together. All right? You know, because you, you know what it is? Like, this is real. We're all, we're all, you know, wherever. It doesn't matter where you are, wherever you are. This is real. And I'm just in a very surreal place right now that's all it is like i'm in a fucking surreal place literally and figuratively figuratively because you know it just hasn't happened yet and um i'm kind of in this gray area in my life right now tokyo japan is in this very gray area where the tension is slowly rising but the sense of urgency isn't there yet and it's it's not frustrating. It's just like, really, you know. That's that's what I'm feeling like every day. Like, really, I'm just looking around. Like, really, 
Like I'm just saying it's a real place. Like and 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 um that's kind of what it feels like for me to be, you know, like in my house I'm fine, you know, like um because you know this is this is where I feel like I should be for like the next several months. I feel like I should be here. And every time I go out for some reason, it feels like I'm doing something wrong, you know. And every time someone from my family goes out, it feels like we're doing something wrong. And I can't communicate that to them. And maybe they know it to a certain degree and they see it abroad. But again, there is, I know there's a disconnect. And, you know, I don't watch the news in front of my son. Um, I want him to be you know, a fucking kid, you know, we talk, I mean, we talk Corona talk sometimes, but I try and keep it to a minimum. I, 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 you know, I don't talk heavily about it in front of him, um, because I want him to be a fucking kid, you know, and, um, somehow the situation is going to affect us all in some ways, hopefully not, you know, hopefully it stays further away from our immediate, um, people in our circle, but, you know, um, we have to fucking see, man, and, Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. We, we, I don't know. So, so I, I again, I've from day one on this podcast, I, I've, I've, I've kept it real with you guys, and this is just really how I'm feeling right now. Um, and I probably will be feeling this way for the next several weeks, um, just in this gray space. Uh, and yeah, that's what Tokyo, that's what Japan is really in right now. Um, I'm, you know, very much a survivalist, so I'm not beaten down by this, you know, I kind of do what I got to do every day, just, this is my only time to really vent about it, you know, I, this is the only way I can really unfiltered kind of express myself, you know, um, so, that's, it is what it is, it is what it is, it is what it is, a little, sorry, a little cheesy, uh, <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so, you know, I'm your fucking Tokyo court inside correspondent, I guess. Um, and you know, ah, another interesting thing, speaking of that was like the fucking news. I noticed, like, I, I knew the new, the news in the mood was changing and you know, the, the media here is kind of an extension of the government. So I feel like the government is preparing the public for what's coming because, um, like, like, two days ago, you know, I'm pretty sure you've seen uh, a lot of the videos coming out of New York and healthcare officials and stuff like that, really talking about um, the lack of resources and what's going on in videos and images coming out of like hospitals and emergency rooms, especially in America and in Europe. Only like yesterday, I, that has really hit mainstream Japanese news, you know, and people are like, oh my gosh, did you see the videos from New York, I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, I seen this shit like a week ago, like, <laughs> like, I've been watching this shit for like a, a week, trying to tell y'all motherfuckers, like, so, you know, um, stuff like that, you know, like, it's just very transparent that, you know, until things really get fucking batshit crazy, the government's gonna try and keep a lid on things as much as possible, um, um, not keep a lid on things, but keep things contained as much as possible but quickly that um runway is running out and you know i expect this time next week um the podcast is gonna be like on a whole different vibe a whole different topic you know so um i don't know we'll, we'll see how that goes and um probably next week is gonna be a for the, fuck it, for the foreseeable future, until things kind of level off, and I'm just, like, locked in my fucking house, you know, <laughs> like, when I'm locked in my house, and I ain't got shit else to do, then I can start talking about other shit, you know, to kind of occupy my time, but, because um, uh, once I'm in my house, like, I'm basically just gonna start turning off the TV, um, pretty much, you know, because it really, you know, once we're in it, we're gonna be in it, you know, and, and I'm, I'm kind of taking precautions for that. Besides just going out for food, I'm, my the majority of my energy is going to be keeping my family spirits up, you know, and I'm going to be a lot lighter. Uh, so, yeah, so so until that point, pretty much I'm just going to be your roving corona news reporter fucking drinking this shit. 
<laughs> mm. Got another one in the fridge, by the way. Yeah, which I'm gonna fucking polish off before I go to bed, just because, just because, you know, I can. So, all right, y'all. Let, let me let me get out of here, because um, I, I, again, this the format of this episode was just all over the place. If if it was tough to listen to, I'm sorry. Um, but I think it's just real, man. Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, Rod, <laughs> Rod, thanks for again another email. Um, interesting thing. This is just a, sorry inside joke between <laughs> me and Rod inside conversation. Something really interesting happened. Uh, you know, related to the email you sent me, we actually had a blackout last night. <laughs> <laughs> on last night was what April 1st we had a blackout and um, it was two back to back blackouts for like 10 like 5 10 minutes each and you know uh, what we went back and forth about I was like yeah 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 okay you know um, but then the blackout happens oh shit it might be going down <laughs> Oh shit, you know, and so I just walked over to the door, click, <laughs> but you know, the power went back on, but, but it was just fun, it was just funny, I kind of had to half laugh at myself, half like, oh, 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 <laughs> so again, thanks a lot for, for, um, corresponding with me or whatever, and I'm sure we'll talk more, uh, via email, and again, anyone on Facebook, on Facebook, no, Facebook on uh you know, I'm on this beer that's what I'm on I'm on this craft beer no. <laughs> on um Instagram or you know at Japan according to Akil email me questions for Akil at gmail.com it's all one word um it sounds how it is it's, you spell it how it sounds of course on YouTube Akil Akil Watson just fucking Google me, it'll come up, Akil Watson YouTube, it'll come up, um, and yeah, just send me a fucking message if you want to, um, you know, anything you want to know about going on here currently in Japan that I probably might have missed, because this episode was just a lot of raw emotion, if you will, um, so, yeah, just let me know, alright, alright man, let me get up out of here, and I will holler at y'all later, peace.